So CAR T cell, particularly desk, has a lot of abstract actually from the efficacy standpoint. So looking, for example, only in the older population where the activity is the same in a Zuma trial as the younger population, very promising, offering an option in patients who don't have option in a relapse refractory setting. There's some data on CAR T cell in CNS lymphoma, small number of patients, nine, 10 patients, but very promising also, some very durable response. There's some data on mental cell lymphoma, also small population, but very first time we have CAR T data in mental cell lymphoma. It's sort of a very quick uh, snapshot on the efficacy at ASCO in 2019 in large cell lymphoma. There are some um, strategies to try to improve toxicities, mitigate toxicity by early use of steroids that actually show a clear decrease of CRS and neurotoxicity without affecting the efficacy, so that's very exciting. I thought the one, another thing that was interesting is um, prediction of response, total metabolic tumor volume and baseline correlate with the response and outcome, but also the day 28. Um, circulating tumor DNA, CT DNA at day 28, really translates into an enormous difference in the outcome. There were 24 patients, 12 of them were positive, um, 10 of them relapsed, 12 of them were negative, only two of them relapsed. And that's an opportunity at the stage of MRD early on to maybe intervene because we know that the outcome of patients with CAR T cells, when they fail at three, within three months, they do very poorly. And that brings me to the next step in CAR T at ASCO is that there was also some interesting early presentation of dual CAR-D, off-the-shelf CAR-D that is really early, but also other um, constructs that try to build up on a third generation of CAR-T and combination with checkpoint inhibitors that will hopefully continue to show the impact, game-changing technology in aggressive lymphomas.